This is part 6 in our series of lecture videos on section 2.2. In this video we talk about the Cartesian product of sets. If A and B are any two sets, we first have to talk about what we mean by an ordered pair of an element from A and B. So the notation is given by this. If little a is an element of set capital A and little b is an element of set capital B, then this notation denotes the ordered pair AB. And there's an implied ordering in that ordered pair that it matters in which order we write A and B. So accordingly, if we have two ordered pairs, AB and CD, then we define them to be equal precisely if the first components, A and C, are equal and the second components, B and D, are equal. Now we're ready to define what we mean by the Cartesian product of two sets. If A and B are any two sets, we define the Cartesian product of A with B to be the following. It's defined here using set builder notation. It's the set of all ordered pairs x, y, such that x is an element of A and y is an element of B. It's often the case that A and B are taken from the same set but that doesn't have to be the case. A and B could be two entirely different kinds of sets and we can still form their Cartesian product. So let's do an example of a Cartesian product in which A and B are discrete sets. We'll take A to be the set having elements 1, 2, and 3 and B the set having elements A and B and then we ask you these five questions. So put your video on pause and see if you can answer these five questions. Okay, so here are my answers to these questions. So first of all, is the ordered pair 3 comma A in A cross B? So you just have to observe that 3 is an element of A, because here it is, and A is an element of B, so yes, that ordered pair is in the Cartesian product A cross B. Is the ordered pair 3 comma A in A cross A? Well, no, because the second component is not an element of A. But is the ordered pair 3, 1 in A cross A? Yes, it is, because 3 is in A and 1 is in A, so we can form 3 comma 1. And notice that that's considered to be different from the ordered pair 1 comma 3. Now, use listing notation to represent the Cartesian product of A cross B. And so what you have to do is you have to pair each of the elements in this set with an element in this set. If you do that, you get the following thing. And notice that I've used correct listing notation by putting curly brackets on either side. And I've listed the elements of the um, Cartesian product in between, separated by commas. And you'll notice that there are six such elements. And what about if you use listing notation to represent A cross A? That's going to have more ordered pairs. There will be nine such ordered pairs. And the Cartesian product is given as follows. So, um, extrapolating from these two examples, we, we notice that A has three elements, B has two, and the Cartesian product of A with B had six elements. And when we took the Cartesian product of A with itself, we got nine elements. So what would be your conjecture as to how many elements are in X cross Y if X and Y are both finite sets? It seems reasonable that there will be um, the number of elements in X multiplied by the number of elements in Y, that's how many elements will be in the Cartesian product. And that's one reason why um, one uses the notation X times Y to denote the Cartesian product. One way of measuring the size of a discrete set is to just simply count how many elements are in that set. And so the fact that the Cartesian product has the number of elements in X times the number of elements in Y justifies giving that set the uh, name X cross Y. 
Now what about if we take an example in which A and B are not discrete sets, but rather they are intervals? So this is interval notation. See if you can identify what A cross B looks like using set builder notation, and then see if you can draw a sketch of it using the um, Euclidean coordinate plane that you worked with in your calculus classes. Well, here's A cross B. The first line gives you the, the working definition of it, and the second line gives you a slightly more detailed version of what it is. The notation R2 refers to the Cartesian product R cross R, and the exact working definition of this is it's the set of x, y, and R2 such that x is in A, and y is in b. But to say that x is in a is to say that x is bigger than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 2, and to say that y is in here is to say that y is bigger than or equal to 4 and strictly smaller than 6. Now what would that look like if we actually drew a sketch of it? Um, so let's have a look. If we drew a sketch of it, we drew our xy coordinate system, and I'll just use a rough scale. Say this is 1 and this is 2. Let's say this is 4 and this is 6. Then the set of all xy such that x is bigger than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 2, and y is bigger than or equal to 4 and strictly smaller than 6, would be all of the points in this region that would include the points on the boundary here, but not include the points in the top. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a rectangular region um, in the R2 plane. Now this gives us further justification for using the notation A cross B. If you have an interval, you, cannot, you can no longer measure the size of it by the number of elements in it, but you can measure the size of it by measuring its length. Now the set A in this example has a length of 1 because uh, it's an interval from 1 to 2 and the set B has a length of 2 because it's an interval from 4 to 6. Now how might you measure the size of this rectangular region? Well you can measure its area. And the area is exactly 2 minus 1 times 6 minus 4. And so since the size of the sets A, B, and A cross B um, are related in that way. Again, it seems like a reasonable notation to refer to the Cartesian product as A cross B. So we've seen that if, you, if A and B are two intervals, any kind of intervals, then A cross B will look like a rectangular region. But on the other hand, suppose we give ourselves a region like this, which is not rectangular, do you see that you could write it as a union of Cartesian products? How might you do that? So put your video on pause and give it a try. Well, there are various ways to do it. One way would be to look at this part of the region here. This is a rectangular region here. And this is also a rectangular region. So each of those can be viewed as a certain Cartesian product and the union of those two would give us the entire region. Okay, there are other ways of chopping it up as a union of Cartesian products, but that's certainly one way. And so we can write down the answer as follows. It's the union of this region. So this region is 1, 3, cross 2, 4. That gives us this, so that's what I've written here. Union 3, 6, cross 2, 3. And there you have it. So that's one way to write this as a union of two Cartesian products. And by doing that, one can come up with the area of this region by simply adding up the areas of these two pieces. Now there's actually a more advanced subject. It's called uh, measure theory. 
And measure theory is a subject in which we have um, much more complicated shapes in the xy plane, and we ask, is there some way of figuring out what the area of that shape is? And the idea is to try to write it as a union of rectangular things, maybe not finitely many pieces like this, but maybe countably many pieces, and by adding up the areas of the uh, rectangles that make it up, one can come up with a way of figuring out what is the area of a fairly complicated things. And that's uh, an interesting branch of mathematics called measure theory, something that you may see in your future.